mai na leo pilie na leo pili mai na pua e mali u mai e ho olo he e ho olo he mai e lo kahi e e lo kahi mai e aloha e e aloha I'm delighted to have this opportunity for the next milestone for PIDP. Some of you know that I have the distinct honor of being Scotia involved with the formation of the Pacific Island Studies program here. Uh, when I came back decades later, uh, of course the Pacific Island programs in the East West Center have continued in many forms and shapes, uh, unabated really. Uh, but the coordinating role of PIDP, and not only its own programs, but to make sure the family of programs that we run at the East West Center uh, are attuned to our mission, but also to the, dot, the priorities and desires of the Pacific Islanders themselves. We take our connections with the Pacific seriously. And so to rededicate ourselves to increasing fortitude to do the right thing in the region uh, is, I think, a good reason for pause and to celebrate this time this afternoon. PIDP, 40, 40 years old. But in those 40 years, uh, I think there has been a real um, significant impact made to the people of the Pacific. And um, from that perspective, as a daughter of the Pacific, um, I just wanted to thank you. You'll see that we've tried to honor that legacy on the website. Um, so when you do get have a look, look at the timeline, look at the pictures. Um, but today, in 2020, at the beginning of a new decade, we set up the East West Center for the next 60 years to be the premier US Institute in all things Pacific. And clap and In case you didn't know, is at an inflection point and quite apart from great power rivalry, which we so often um, use to frame discussions about the Pacific at the moment, the Pacific is more intentional about being um, a region uh, than it ever has before in its history and it's an exciting time. And uh, coincidentally, this is also the 40th uh, anniversary of the Pacific Islands Development Program, PADP. So the question is this, what does the Pacific region look like 40 years from now? I think that's the beautiful thing about the future, is, you know, it doesn't exist yet. You know, we've only got now, and we've got the benefit of all our history together. And, you know, I think someone said once that, you know, the shame about history is that we never learn our lessons from history. But I feel like surely there's a point where we can stop doing that. And I think there's enough goodwill and intent, especially in our part of the world, for that to happen. I think it's really exciting. I think... I mean, 40 years ago, could we ever have imagined this? You know, so I think the next 40 years, even quicker, it's, it's, a, it's incredibly exciting. And I think all those awesome things are going to happen. Yeah, I, I see a place where there's a resurgence of language and culture and history that each Pacific nation has and sharing that. I, I, I see that here in Hawaii. We've, we've had that resurgence and I hope it continues. Um, I also hope there's innovative solutions with technology for uh, climate change problems with rising sea levels that we can look at ways in which collectively bringing these smart young people to look at solutions of using seawater, making new water. Those sustainable solutions that um, a lot of people are innovating, those have to come to the Pacific Island nations. People in the high level positions should ask themselves as well, 
How do I want the future to look like for the next generation? And what should I do for that future to happen? I mean, you're gonna, the way I see it, you're gonna see a lot of technology, you're gonna see you know, a lot of places with probably by 2050, 100% renewable energy, you're gonna see a lot of the innovative energy you know, actions and um, measurements. But then again, you know, if you look at the smaller countries in the region, you're gonna see a lot of out-migration. And you know, that's maybe a sensitive topic to a lot of people, but that's the reality of it. You know? And then there will be questions about international um, human rights in terms of, what about the sovereignty of these people? What kind of questions are we gonna ask in 40 years from now? So I think we shouldn't wait for 40 years to happen. I think emerging leaders and should work together with emerging leaders, uh, these young people, to see what kind of future they want to see 40 years from now. You know, given a lot of the challenges that you know the Pacific Island faces, like the rest of the world faces, it's often very difficult to be hopeful. But I think it is also important to note that Pacific Island people are very resilient people. We came here thousands of years ago. We survived, we lived, we thrived. And I think we'll continue to do that. Despite all the narratives of sinking that we have with climate change, and it's a reality. It's a reality for all Pacific Island countries, but particularly for small island countries like the Marshall Islands of Tuvalu, that sometimes it's difficult uh, to be hopeful in the next 40 years. But I think, you know, hope is the only thing that we have. But also at the same time, Pacific Island cultures will be reproduced, not only in the Pacific, but in different parts of the world. You'll see Pacific Island cultures thriving, not only in the west coast of the US, but the east coast, in Alaska, in different parts of the world, that will have connections back to the ocean from which they came from. I believe that we will thrive. We won't sink. Yoda, thank you. I think the Pacific Islands program in the East West Center is really um, great for our community, not only small community but the whole region of the Pacific, uh, because we feel that we are part of this wider community in Hawaii, especially, and. I, I feel it's really helpful and more education to us and for people that would need more information about what is the program for and how we can get help and how they can also help our community to, to be educated. I think that uh, the way to uplift our people is through education, higher education at all levels, undergraduate all the way to PhD. Uh, and I think if we can build this pipeline of researchers going through PIDP to UH to perhaps the community colleges and into the region, I think that'll be great. I'm really excited to be here tonight for what I guess is a little bit of a relaunch of the Pacific Islands Development Program at the East West Center. Uh, this is something that Richard and I have talked about launching in together to really revitalize our collaborative efforts to engage much more meaningfully in the Pacific. We think that between the University of Hawaii and the East West Center, we can really be a powerful force for good in the Pacific um, and help the islands across a number of dimensions, including health, education, um, sustainable economic development, and at the same time, learn a lot for Hawaii from the Pacific Islands as well. Um, my area, my personal area of passion is um, Pacific Island, Hawaiian and Pacific Island uh, theater, the arts, um, film, and um, bringing more and more people um, into our classrooms. That is my area of focus, and it is something that totally speaks to my students. And my students are all, uh, we've got 43% of the population of the Windward Community College uh, campus is Hawaiian, native Hawaiian, and with the uh, Pacific Islanders on the other side of the island, I think it only makes sense to bring us into the classrooms themselves. So I think bringing in artists, bringing in people that are working not just in, in politics, but also in grass, grassroots movements.
I think I'd like to see the PIDP as a, uh, more of a gathering place and bringing together the different uh, peoples, the different cultures from the Pacific region. So that is something that is often lacking, that we have all these different cultures, different uh, groupings and organizations, but there isn't one place that kind of brings them together, except for something like the Festival of Pacific Arts, which happens once every four years. So I would like to PIDP to be more of a center where people gather to discuss, to thresh out, you know, pressing issues of concern uh, to the region. That, to me, is the... If they can just do that, bringing us together, facilitating opportunities to discuss and figure out, you know, how we can move forward together, that would be a big one worth investing time and money.